All right, we made it to the end of the conference. Uh, thank you, everybody. Every, yeah, it is the end of the conference. Uh, we do have Hackfest tomorrow, so thanks, Ruth. Um, so that is still available for sign up. It's free. Really great place to uh, talk to people in the community. We have tons of different topics to discuss, and there's an authority fest uh, tomorrow as well. They'll start, I think, at 11 a.m. Eastern time. Uh, they'll go on for a couple of hours, but correct me if I'm wrong on that. So Ruth just uh, popped in the link for that if you'd like to register, and that'll be going on all day tomorrow. So um, thank you, everybody, for attending the conference this year to all of our presenters, for our sponsors, uh, in particular with Emerald Data doing our captioning sponsor, Equinox being the platform sponsor, and Mobius being an additional champion sponsor. And for all the sponsors, exhibitors, everybody who is involved, the moderators for this, um, and uh, everybody in the uh, conference planning committee as well. So we have a dev update uh, as well as an update from our Evergreen Project Board. I believe Galen's going to start first. Uh, do you have um, slides you want to share? Okay, I will stop sharing screen sharing now. Okay, well, um, first uh, I want to extend uh, my thanks uh, to Gina and to uh, the rest of uh, the uh, conference uh, committee for organizing a, a great one. Um, and I hope uh, that all of you had uh, a, a good uh, time. And as uh, Ruth uh, uh, mentions in uh, comments, it uh, ain't uh, over yet. Um, please uh, come uh, to the Developers Hackfest uh, and uh, the uh, uh, Authority Fest uh, tomorrow. So um, what I'm here uh, to do right now is to uh, provide uh, an update uh, and a bit of a re retrospective on the past year of um, work uh, on Evergreen as a piece of the software uh, and uh, as uh, a set of uh, documentation. Um, one thing uh, I should note, um, I don't know if I've mentioned this uh, in one of uh, my previous uh, development updates or not, um, but I use uh, the word development uh, advisedly. Um, it has sometimes been called uh, the developer's update, um, but the process um, to that leads uh, to Evergreen involves just more uh, than the people who um, you know apply code uh, through other keyboards uh, and who uh, call themselves uh, developers. Um, I think it's very important uh, to acknowledge uh, that without um, the library workers um, who come to us with their thoughts and yes, uh, their uh, complaints uh, about Evergreen, um, the people who organize meetings, uh, the people who write uh, documentation, um, and the people who try to keep us more or less um, in the same direction that none of this uh, would um, happen. But since uh, this is uh, the, uh, the development update, uh, I will focus on you know, some of uh, our concrete uh, achievements. So in terms of uh, major releases, um, we've had uh, releases, uh, two major releases of Evergreen, uh, 3.8 uh, in uh, November of last year and uh, 3 9 uh, in April, uh, as well as uh, an open surf uh, release. Um, and if we continue by the numbers, um, over 1300 uh, commits uh, have uh, appeared as if by magic. No, no magic whatsoever, just hard work. But over 1300 uh, commits have appeared in uh, the main branch authored uh, by uh, 35 people um, with uh, the contributions of um, uh, another approximately 50 people uh, who have tested uh, and signed off uh, on patches. Um, and something that is hard to count uh, and unfortunately hard enough uh, to count uh, that we haven't uh, counted um, is the number of people who have uh, contributed uh, via their work um, in Launchpad 
to report issues um, and uh, to give uh, feedback uh, on bug fixes and uh, enhancements. Um, so as part of uh, the um, outcome of this, we have uh, an open source release uh, and eight uh, evergreen releases uh, counting uh, betas. A little more on those numbers at uh, the end of uh, the presentation. So um, one thing um, that we have uh, done um, as a way of um, both be coming together as a development and testing and documentation a community, as well as you know plowing uh, through uh, the long list of uh, pull you know, requests, uh, is uh, bug squashing a week. Um, and uh, I want to give uh, my thanks to Taryn McKenna for uh, organizing these uh, events. So bug squashing week, um, which has a cousin that I will get to in a moment, um, is uh, an opportunity to go through, um, stand up a bunch of evergreen tester systems uh, and have their people test their patches, sign off on them, uh, and uh, commit them uh, to uh, evergreen. Um, so as you can see, you know, overall, you know, we've had, uh, you know, a large number of patches uh, that were handled uh, during uh, by Gus squashing that week. Um, and uh, I do want to acknowledge um, that, you know, several organizations uh, and people have um, been providing test uh, systems, uh, both for bug squashing week and uh, for feedback uh, fast. Um, so organizations and people I would like to call out um, and apologies in advance uh, if I've missed anybody, uh, include Jason uh, Boyer, um, Blake uh, Graham Henderson, Chris uh, Sharp, um, and the Equinox Open Library Initiative, Mobius, and Georgia Pines. Um, and, you know, I'm sure I've missed uh, somebody. Uh, and if you know that I've missed you, uh, please don't uh, hesitate uh, to, uh, you know, shout uh, in chat. Now, I had mentioned uh, that Bug Squashing Week uh, has a cousin. Um, and that cousin is uh, the feedback uh, fast. Um, unlike a bug squashing week, um, which uh, tends to focus on bugs, uh, feedback uh, fast uh, is uh, about um, focusing on new features, um, be they um, uh, bug fixes, yeah, well, be they you know, completely new modules uh, or uh, just uh, enhancements uh, to existing uh, ones. Um, so. To feedbacks fast, um, by the way, that is uh, the official plural, um, were done in the, the previous year, one for the 3.8 uh, cycle and uh, one for uh, 3.9 uh, with overall about 88, 88 uh, patches signed off, 50 uh, committed, um, and 200 uh, uh, plus uh, bits of individual bug uh, feedback. Um, and I will mention for any of you who are new to the Evergreen community that some of our vocabulary um, is influenced uh, by our tools. Um, so something that is a bug report might uh, be one in the sense of pointing out a flaw or, or issue with uh, the software, um, but bugs uh, can also be, you know, uh, uh, refer to the record of uh, an enhancement uh, or a new feature. Um, I guess one way of looking at it uh, is that uh, a bug um, is uh, just a, a step in uh, the direction towards uh, perfection. Yeah. That might be a little uh, pretentious, uh, but uh, you know, it's perhaps at least a counterweight uh, to the notion of a, a bug uh, as an annoyance uh, that uh, must uh, be squashed. So um, on the theme of acknowledging individual contributions, um, you can see uh, this uh, list of uh, people uh, who uh, participated uh, in Bug Squashing Week uh, and 
get uh, feedback uh, fast. Um, and, um, you know, what we have is, uh, you know, true global representation. So my thanks to each and every one of you who, who uh, contributed. Um, and hey, let's uh, do this again, uh, I'd say a couple more times uh, this uh, year. So there were two release uh, teams uh, for 3.8, Jason Boyer, myself, Jason Etheridge, and uh, Michelle Morgan. Uh, and then for 3.9, uh, Mike Rylander, Shortland Link, uh, Jason Etheridge, uh, and uh, Michelle Morgan. Um, and you know, the function of a release team includes um, several sub-functions. One is reviewing and merging pull requests. Um, another is keeping on track with our self-imposed deadlines. And another is making sure that uh, the releases happen. Um, but one factor uh, and one group of uh, people I also want to uh, specifically acknowledge are those uh, who have um, you know, helped out, uh, you know, with um, the release nodes, um, and you know, specific uh, acknowledgements I want to make here uh, include uh, Andrea Nyman and uh, Jennifer Weston, um, as well as uh, Dig uh, collectively. Um, since I don't know about you, but reading code, um, you know, does uh, take effort. Um, Without uh, the release notes, it would be much harder for users uh, of Evergreen to plan. Um, some new people to acknowledge um, as uh, documentation uh, and uh, code authors uh, include Marianne Alexander, um, Gina Monti, um, Lucien uh, Van Vu, um, and Jessica Wolford. Um, and in the case of Lucien, uh, I do want to acknowledge that his contribution of uh, the OIA PMH uh, provider um, is one that uh, had been rescued um, from a pull request uh, he had made several years ago. And uh, I want to specifically uh, acknowledge um, Jane Sandberg uh, and Mike Ranlander uh, for helping to rescue the OIA PMH uh, patch. Um, which, uh, among other things, will allow Evergreen to be more easily harvested uh, by discovery uh, layers, um, and uh, by all uh, who um, find a lack of a pile of uh, marked records uh, in uh, their lives. Um, so last year, we had a new uh, core committer. Um, I would like us all to uh, give recognition to Michelle Morgan of uh, Noble, um, who has hit uh, the ground running as a core committer, not only uh, as um, a you know, person who uh, tests and merges patches, uh, but uh, who has uh, continued to release her work uh, by serving on the 3.8 and uh, 3 line uh, release uh, teams. Um, and to be a, a, a little uh, mysterious uh, and also give uh, a heads up, uh, I'm expecting that uh, we will be uh, shortly naming uh, another core recommender, uh, but more on that uh, later. So with respect to what's um, appeared, um, Angular, uh, sorry, Evergreen 3.8 um, contributes, um, yeah, continues uh, the, uh, overall meta project of uh, rewriting um, evergreen staff interfaces in, in Angular um, by including um, acquisitions, uh, uh, improvements uh, in administration, um, the Angular holdings, maintenance, uh, and item attributes editor, um, a revamped hold so poll list, and uh, updates to the triggered events logs uh, for patrons uh, and items. Some other features of Node include bibliographic records, uh, notes uh, fields uh, for when that bit of juicy um, bibliographic uh, gossip uh, is so fresh uh, that uh, it shouldn't uh, be in a 500 uh, field. Um, 
and um, uh, a big project uh, to consolidate uh, patron notes, uh, alerts, uh, and messages, uh, as well as um, you know updating uh, Stripe uh, to reflect uh, new changes uh, to their APIs. Um, so a couple screenshots. Um, this is one that I'm personally a, a little proud of. Um, this is coming from the new Angular Fund Manager um, that was um, introduced uh, in 3.8 um, and um, sponsored uh, by the uh, Evergreen Community Development uh, Initiative. Um, and what we ended up uh, doing is taking what um, had been uh, a set of several pages uh, and consolidating them into a single, you know, find a management interface that have has a tabs. Um, and it's probably a signifier of something, um, but please uh, don't um, try to answer what. But, you know, you know, I'm really appreciating the ability that I have had uh, as uh, a a developer to you know help and consolidate uh, administrative interfaces into something that's hopefully a little more uh, usable. Um, another um, set of uh, screenshots. Uh, these are a couple from uh, the holdings and item attributes editor. Um, so we have you know some of our uh, typical things like you know uh, book uh, jacket images when available in uh, the editor. Uh, as well as, um, you know, continuing the tradition of the holdings editor as a tool that uh, lets you not only manage changes to one item at a time, uh, but to big batches of them at a time. So going on to uh, three nine. Um, sadly, three nine has uh, failed in that uh, it has not, uh, you know, pointed to, to it has not uh, produced uh, interfaces uh, that uh, can literally be hugged. But we'll have to console ourselves uh, with a lot of um, great new features. Um, so uh, again, continuing uh, the trend of uh, angularization with uh, the action trigger, uh, more improvements to the whole pull list. Um, grid infrastructure changes and the shelving location order, order editor. Um, but also things like uh, the customizable uh, staff uh, portal, simple reports, uh, which uh, I think uh, is an achievement towards uh, actually towards reporting that is actually simpler. Um, and I would like uh, to uh, acknowledge uh, Missouri Evergreen and CW Mars uh, for their sponsorship of that, um, as well as um, the ability to localize uh, or add translations uh, to notifications uh, via action trigger in uh, an easily managed uh, way. Um, the custom cover uh, image uh, uploader for those uh, times when, let's uh, face it, Sometimes uh, the uh, commercial you know, services uh, just simply produce uh, the wrong uh, cover image. Um, the OAA PMH uh, data you know, provider, as um, mentioned um, previously, uh, some improvements uh, to uh, item inventory, um, as well as uh, the ability to uh, embed uh, your carousels uh, more easily on external websites. And of course, um, more details, great and small, uh, can be found in uh, the release notes. So um, some uh, screenshots. Um, this is an example of part of uh, the customization or part of the interface uh, for creating a new simple uh, report. Um, and look at it. It is uh, indeed uh, simpler uh, than the um, big uh, reports uh, editor. Um, as uh, well as uh, an example of um, the custom uh, staff uh, portal. Um, and here, this offers you a choice. Um, 
you can choose her to be boring and use it to do things like um, note uh, conferences or uh, internal training events uh, or internal staff uh, news. Or you can use uh, the custom uh, staff uh, portal for its uh, true purpose and uh, include uh, cat uh, pictures uh, directly in uh, the uh, staff uh, homepage. So, um, you know, one of uh, the, you know, many ways that uh, we do come uh, together um, for, you know, uh, Evergreen, you know, you know, for Evergreen Net Development is uh, the Evergreen Hackaway. Um, I want to acknowledge uh, Rogan Hamby uh, for uh, his continued uh, efforts in organizing this uh, event. Um, so in 2021, it was uh, held uh, in uh, in October. Um, you know, quite Hackaway for patches coming at the end of uh, a heavy sprint. And the 2022 Hackaway uh, will be online this year as well. Um, and Rogan will be sending out a survey uh, for preferred uh, dates um, shortly. Um, but um, I think uh, we can have every hope um, that, you know, soon um, we'll be able to have uh, the Evergreen Hackaway uh, in person uh, again. And I will be good uh, and uh, sit on some uh, news uh, that is for the internet uh, to tell. Um, so before we get to my closing uh, point, um, I do want to acknowledge um, that the eight um, evergreen releases uh, during the past year is uh, a decrease um, in you know the typically 30 or so that we've managed uh, in past uh, years um, so we've we have had uh, some issues uh, doing prompt um, ma monthly maintenance releases um, and uh, I think uh, you know we do have um, some thinking that uh, we need uh, to do at various uh, levels uh, about how to get back uh, to that uh, tempo. Um, but it is something that I do want to uh, acknowledge, um, you know, you know, is uh, an issue and is uh, something that, you know, you know, many of us uh, are concerned about, uh, but are also working towards a solution about. Um, so based on chat, uh, on chat, uh, apparently the answer to that problem is uh, to uh, fling lots and lots of uh, omelets uh, at uh, the release uh, building uh, team. Um, so uh, I will take that uh, under uh, advisement. Um, so I do um, want uh, to um, thank everybody for your time and attention. Um, before I uh, turn it over to um, Jeanette uh, for her closing uh, remarks, um, I would like to ask um, if uh, there are any um, uh, immediate questions uh, that you have uh, for me or that uh, other members of uh, the developer and documentation team might be able to answer for you. Okay, well, um, hearing that none, I'll go ahead and uh, stop uh, sharing my screen and uh, hand uh, the reins over to Jeanette. Thank you. Thanks, Galen. So as we wrap up the 2022 Evergreen International Online Conference, I did want to thank you all for attending. I'm impressed that there are 109 of you who are still with us at the end of the last session on the last day of the conference. And I can't thank the conference committee enough for pulling together another successful online conference. Also, thank you to everyone who presented, facilitated sessions, and also sponsored this event. I do have a 
few quick Evergreen Project Board updates. Um, first, I did want to thank our outgoing board members for their years of service, Tiffany Little of Georgia Pines and Chris Owens of Blanchester Public Library in the COOL Consortium. I also wanted to recognize and thank Jason Boyer. He was our outgoing board president, handed the reins over last spring. And finally, I wanted to welcome our new board members and thank them for their willingness to serve in this important role. We have Kate Coleman of Jefferson County Library in Missouri, Ruth Frazier of Evergreen, Indiana, Chris Sharp of Georgia Pines, Galen Charlton of Equinox uh, renewed his term and is continuing to serve as board treasurer, and Rogan Hamby, also of Equinox, who stepped in to fill a board vacancy. Thank you, all of you. Um, one major highlight from the board was finalizing our move away from the Software Freedom Conservancy. As our own 501c3 nonprofit, we now have full ownership of all Evergreen trademarks and registrations are, and are in possession of all project funds. So thank you to everyone who worked very hard over the past few years to make that happen. Along with this conference theme to shape our future, uh, the board has formed a new strategic planning committee, a bylaws committee, and a trademark enforcement committee. And if anyone is interested in any of those committees, please do let me know. Finally, I'd like to close out the conference this year with a very exciting announcement. CW Mars has received preliminary approval to help sponsor the next conference, which is tentatively planned in person for April 26th through 28th 2023 in Worcester, Massachusetts. We promise to have finalized details for everyone soon. Uh, personally, we'd love some help with local arrangements. I'm looking at you, Noble, and possibly Bibliomation. Um, we haven't had an in-person conference, as you all know, since 2019. And we haven't hosted a conference in the New England area since the Boston conference in 2014. So I think this is going to be really exciting for a number of reasons. And um, and I am just, I, I'm thrilled to welcome you all and hope everyone will be able to join us next spring. Gina, that's all I have. Um, if you had a few more things you wanted to wrap up with. Sure. Um, oh, uh, someone's asking for those dates again. Oh, sorry. Yep. They are April 26th through 28th. And that, that's the main conference dates. Yeah. <laughs> There'll probably be a pre-conference and a hack away that we have to figure out on either end. All right. So um, there is an annual report that I suppose is like really the only thing. I'm going to put the link in chat. So you have that. Uh, but otherwise, um, I think that's pretty much it. So thanks, everybody, <laughs> for making this possible. Um, I know, especially when it comes to online meetings, uh, there's some exhaustion of just having to deal with this for a few years. But uh, I think that we had a lot of great sponsors this year. I think we had a really a well-rounded variety of different programs and presentations that people brought in. So thank you, everybody. Across the board, we wouldn't have made this possible without you. And uh, we'll see you all at Hackfest tomorrow. Um, otherwise, I'll see you in IRC and uh, in person. We're going to have an in-person conference next year. So thanks, everybody, and have a good night. <laughs>